respected seniors and dear friends uh, this is my hundredth video on YouTube hope these videos are helping you this is about PNS guided infractive killer clock so if you look at the history there are numerous approaches and modified approaches described in the history first it was described in 1917 by Bezi followed by 1918 by Bibitsky then Raj et al described it in 1973 and that approach become popular but after that pericoracoid approach and vertical intracurricular block is very popular nowadays they are safe effective and anyone can do it without much complication so th this is a nice block um, as compared to supracurricular block uh, as there are less chances of uh, pneumothorax there are less chances of phrenic nerve palsy so you can use it like uh, supracurricular block for upper limb surgery it provides similar uh, pattern of sensory and motor blockage so if you look at the anatomy VIB is the at the midpoint of uh, somewhere near the midpoint of clavicle where this all three cord posterior uh, lateral and medial cord lies lateral to the artery so with single injection you can uh, block all three cords uh, and uh, it is a, a bit superficial approach as compared to pericoracoid approach if you go to pericoracoid approach you, you will have to move little laterally and here you will find all these three cord at uh, their uh, anatomical po position according to their name I mean posterior cord lies posterior to the artery lateral cord lies lateral to the artery and medial cord lies medial to the artery so uh, you may, may require different injection or you require higher volume to cover all three codes in pericoracoid approach so if we talk about VIB first it is a very popular block in European countries uh, it is bit superficial if you look at the anatomical landmark we need to first palpate the jugular fossa then you need to palpate the ventral apophysis of acromion then you have to draw a line in between these two and mark a midpoint immediately below the clavicle and that will become your entry point you have to insert the needle perpendicular to, to the skin and look for the responses so uh, this in this approach there are chances of uh, difficulty in landmark identification and wrong landmark may lead to complication so how to pulp uh, it is very easy to pulp at the medial point that is jugular fossa but it is difficult to pulp at the lateral point that is ventral apophysis of the clavicle you cannot pulp it easily the lateral part of uh, clavicle and uh, because there is uh, cloud uh, the, 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 there are many bones in this area that, that is uh, acromion process clavicle humerus uh, uh, head of the humerus so it is difficult to pulp it so how to palpate it there is a method we we can look at the uh, acromion process from the behind so we have to start palpating the sp spinous process of scapula from behind and if you go laterally and anteriorly you will find the acromion process of the scapula and that is how you can mark it very easily so here you can see you have palpated that the acromion process and then you have to mark the point but in smaller size patient especially of Indian patient or uh, Asian patient uh, they are smaller size so there is some correction uh, if this dis distance is less than 22 centimeter then we have to dis uh, subtract it from uh, 22 uh, and uh, multiply it by 0.2 and the entry point will be uh, that distance from the lateral from the that midpoint so if suppose distance is 18 centimeter we have to subtract subtract it from 22 that is 4 we multiply it by 0.2 that becomes 0.8 so our entry point will be 0.8 centimeter lateral from the midpoint if we don't do this cor correction there are chances of pneumothorax or vascular puncture so be careful in palpating landmark and uh, selecting the entry point in the vertical uh, infractile curve block so after palpating the 
landmark there. This is very important. The needles should be inserted perpendicular to the skin. It should not be medially. Otherwise, there are chances of pneumothorax because pleura is very close and there are chances of vascular puncture. So be careful. So as I said, when locating for the uh, locating for the plexus we have to be careful here you can see my i am in my, my my train is inserting the needle and he has directed the needle medially and that is not an advisable thing never direct the needle medially you can go cr cranially or cordially or sometimes laterally or change the entry point and look for the response initial response when you, when you insert the needle perpendicular to the skin you uh, initial response will, will be the stimulation of the pectoral nerve and that will stimulate the pectoral muscle so you will find pectoral muscle stimulation initially when you enter in, in this area then when you advance the needle you may find lateral cord response or, or musculocutaneous response uh, you, you can give the drug at this point but ideal response is the posterior cord response here you can see I am inserting the needle perpendicular to the skin and I am searching for the ideal response to, uh, which is posterior cord response so again I am locating the uh, plexus uh, my nerve stimulator is set at 1.1 megahertz and now you can see a nice posterior cord response that is extension of the fingers so if you get this response here you will get a, ex uh, a very good blow so <clears throat> here you can see we have marked the side with a cross so you always stop before you block check for the mark uh, so that you don't uh, go for any complication you don't go, uh, give the block on the wrong side so it is very important so this is the posterior cord response i am reducing the current to 0.5 and less if it is less than 0.3 i will not inject it if i am getting the response here you can see it 0 0.4 0 0.36 it disappearing so this is where i can inject the drug so this is the ideal response for uh, VIB or uh, coracoid approach and if you get it uh, and inject a drug you have to inject 20 ml of LA if you are uh, using it for uh, analgesia then 0.2% ropivacaine or 0.25% bupivacaine or levobupivacaine is enough if you are using for uh, surgery oh, you require higher concentration that is 0.5% of ropivacaine or bupivacaine or levobupivacaine this is a nice video of drug spread after VIB. In one patient, I gave a VIB and scan in the supraclavicular area, and you will see this is the supraclavicular, this is subclavian artery, supraclavicular. And I scan up to interscalene area. So here you can see this is the interscalene area, and this this is the drug surrounding the interscalene area. So even with 20 ml of LA, drug spread up to interscalene area, and that is why uh, chances of phrenic nerve palsy are there with VIB and it is up to 25 percent so with VIB you can get phrenic nerve palsy but with pericoracoid approach it is zero percent pericoracoid approach it is a bit later approach you have to parpet the coracoid process uh, you have to mark the center point of coracoid process uh, go to centimeter medial and two centimeter caudal and that will become your entry point so it is very easy to mark the coracoid process go medially and two, uh, two, two centimeter medially and um, accordingly insert the needle perpendicular the, to, to the screen from anterior to posterior and look for the response success rate is low with single nerve stimulation but so it is better to perform multiple nerve stimulate with multi nerve stimulation or you can go for posterior cord response and inject a uh, larger amount of drug and uh, believe that it will spread to lateral and medial cord here this is the landmark this is the midpoint of the coracoid process you go two centimeter medial and two centimeter caudal so here you can see i am inserting my needle and i am looking for the response it may be either lateral cord medial cord or posterior cord response here you can see i am inserting the needle initially i may get pectoral response 
So I have started getting musculocutaneous response, but the, it is not desired. If I get good, um, uh, this is the lateral cord response, and uh, I can inject at 0.5 milliamp if I get good response. So uh, uh, this is the point where you can inject the drug, uh, but uh, uh, there are chances of failure with this technique. So uh, here you can see this is the musculocutaneous nerve response and it is not a desired response. So what is the desired response? Lateral cord response here you can see lateral cord response but it is not, not also a desired response. So I am looking for a posterior cord response again. Uh, here you can see I am inserting the needle and I am getting, getting the uh, extension of the finger and that is the desired response. If I get this response I will inject the drug and a block will act nicely. Success rate, uh, here you can see supracurricular uh, block has high, got higher success rate uh, as compared to VIB or pericurricular approach. But if you look at the complication rate with supracurricular block, you, you get pneumothorax in up to 6% of the patient. But with VIB it is 0.2 to 2.7% and with pericurricular it is very less that is 0.7%. And if you look at the perennic nerve palsy with supra it is 50% if uh, with VIB it is 25% and with pericurricular approach it is uh, almost 0%. Failure rate as I said with posterior cord response it is 5.8% with medial cord response it is 15.4% and with lateral cord response it is bit higher that is 28.3% response. So posterior cord response is always desirable. I am thankful to Dr. Maulik Mehta for beautiful animation you saw in this video. He, he is very good friend of mine and he allowed me to use his slides for, uh, slides for his, uh, this for this presentation. And I am thankful to you all of you for uh, watching this video. Thank